In this video, I thought I'd talk about nunchaku. Uh, perhaps one of the most misunderstood weapons in martial arts. Uh, probably one of the most uh, made fun of weapons in martial arts. Uh, you see them used in almost every Bruce Lee movie from the 1970s and stuff like that. Uh, a lot of people think that they are overrated. Uh, a lot of people try to compare them to weapons where the comparison is ridiculous. Uh, like, for example, comparing these to a baseball bat, where a baseball bat is a two-handed weapon. Uh, this is very much a one-handed weapon. Uh, there's a lot of misconceptions in how to use them, uh, how good they really are, you know, what kind of damage you can do. Uh, a lot of people think that they're flashy, but they're not practical. Um, what you have to keep in mind is that many martial arts weapons derive from uh, ancient farm tools, uh, and many of them were later adapted to be weapons. Uh, in the case of uh, uh, Nunchaku, they were uh, an ancient farm tool. Uh, I believe it was for threshing rice, something like that. Uh, and now, of course, they have been weaponized since then. Uh, the modern uh, Nunchaku only vaguely resembles what the original would have looked like. Uh, these days, now you have uh, usually a welded steel chain instead of having cord or string going across there. Um, so they're, they're also much stronger. Uh, some martial arts schools will teach you to grip from the bottom of the handle, like this. Uh, other schools will teach you to grip up closer to the top of the handle, like this. Uh, the way I learned it, the way, the way I was taught, is to grip closer to the top than to the bottom. And the reason for that is because if you grab the weapon down here at the end, like this, and you start swinging this weapon around, you'll find that you have very, very little control of it. This part here is always going to move. You're going to have a lot of difficulty controlling this part of the weapon, and then you're also going to have even more trouble controlling the free swinging end of the weapon. So. Gripping it closer to the top gives you firm control of this, right? The, the handle, the part where you are actually grabbing, you have firm control of that. And now you can better control the free swinging end of the weapon while you're using it. Um, what kind of damage can you do with chucks? Uh, there's certainly enough damage. They, they produce enough force that you could knock somebody out with them. Uh, you could potentially fracture somebody's skull with a weapon like this. Um, they could potentially break ribs if you hit somebody to the body with them. Uh, the danger if you hit against a solid object with these is the kickback. So the, the free swinging part will hit and then kick back and come back at you. So you have to be very careful when you're using a weapon like this. Uh, the greatest advantage of having something like this is the fact that it is so portable. I mean, this is a very, very easy weapon to carry. Whether you're, you know, you have something like this in your sleeve, you know, it's very easy to conceal something like this. Whether you have something behind your back, back here, pull it out from your belt. This is a very concealable weapon. And the great advantage of it is the fact that you have so much more reach than a person who has, for example, a pocket knife. You know, a, we're not talking a machete or something extremely long, but just a typical folding knife or switchblade. If somebody comes at you with a knife, you have so much more reach with the chucks than they do. And believe me, that becomes an insurmountable advantage in your favor. So if you were to come up against somebody who happened to have a knife, and, you know, again, knife is an extremely dangerous weapon, but they don't have an answer for this, because if you have something like this, they can't get close to you. This is going to be faster than a knife. So you can manipulate and maneuver the free end of this weapon 
faster than they could ever possibly move their hand with a knife. So you're going to have the advantage in speed and you're going to have a significant advantage in reach with the nunchaku over a knife. So this would be a very good weapon to have in that sense against uh, an opponent armed in that way or an opponent that has, for example, a baton. If you have just a baton or just a knife, this would be a preferred weapon to have. Now, if you start talking about two-handed weapons, if you come up against somebody who has a baseball bat, you know, a, a large club, something like that, then that's, it's foolish then because they have more reach than you do with this and they have a weapon that does significantly more damage. So, you know, it's, you know, there, there's strengths and weaknesses to every weapon. There's uh, good scenarios and bad scenarios for every weapon uh, where you'd like to have one and where you wouldn't want to, but wouldn't like to have that weapon. So keep those things in mind uh, when you're training and remember that it's good to know uh, a variety of basic weapons and then many of the advanced weapons are just uh, advanced applications of the fundamentals that you already know from some of the basic weapons. So once you learn the basic weapons in martial arts, you can apply those skills to pretty much any other weapon that you would learn thereafter. And remember that there's no one perfect weapon for every scenario. Every weapon has strengths and weaknesses. So um, keep that in mind and good luck with your training. Thanks.